May 24th. On this day, we celebrate the memory of our venerable father Simeon the Younger, the starlight of the wonderful mountain. Our holy and God-bearing father Simeon was born in Antioch in 521, of parents who were perfumers from Edessa. His birth had been foretold to his mother, St. Martha, whom we celebrate on July 4th, by the holy forerunner John, who told her the child's name and predicted that he would follow St. John's own example and live an ascetic life. Born without pain, Simeon would only accept his mother's right breast and he refused to suck when she had eaten meat. After his baptism at the age of two, he began to speak and repeated for seven days, I have a father and I have no father, I have a mother and I have no mother, showing in this way his perfect detachment from earthly things. At the age of five, he miraculously escapes, escaped along with his mother from an earthquake in which his father perished, trapped under the ruins of his house. Some time later the child saw Christ surrounded by a multitude of the righteous on the wall of the city and was taught by Christ how to acquire wisdom and escape God's punishment. A man clothed in white then appeared to Simeon and called him to follow him to a mountain situated about eight miles from Antioch in the direction of Seleucia, where he spent several days alone in the company of wild beasts. The child then discovered a small monastery under the direction of a stylite called John, who had been forewarned in visions of his arrival. He welcomed him with joy as one chosen of God, and immediately accepted him under his spiritual direction, amazed at the signs of wisdom in, and amazed by the frugality of, this child of six years old, who only ate every third or seventh day. At the beginning of his life in the monastery, Simeon worked his first miracle. He healed a shepherd who, being jealous of him, had wanted to kill him and had been punished by the withering of his right hand. As he desired to imitate his spiritual father in everything, after having been proved in his intention for a year, he set up a sort of short pillar next to John's column and thus began his career as a stylist at the age of seven. He was encouraged in this by a vision in which Christ revealed to him that standing upright on a pillar would be for him like Christ's crucifixion and the means of imitating his saving passion. The child's starlight showed the ardor of a seasoned warrior in the battle against the demons, where attacks alternated with heavenly visions that came to strengthen him. In one such vision, an elderly patriarch came to anoint him in order to repel all the attacks of the demons. Once, a frightening tempest, provoked by the devil, uprooted and blew away the shelter in which the saint stood on his column. But in the morning, the monks found Simeon still standing on his pillar, his face shining like that of an angel. Even before losing his milk teeth, the child had already acquired the power to heal and to deliver the possessed. His fame as an ascetic and wonder worker spread rapidly throughout the region and resulted even in a visit from the patriarch of Antioch, St. Ephraim, whom we celebrate on the 7th of March, and from the vast crowds that frequented the place to receive the blessing of the two starlights. To the austerities and voluntary privations that Simeon inflicted on his body, he added an immeasurable charity, so that if any came to him without clothes, he would strip himself completely of the clothes he was wearing, even in winter time, and would endure months of bitter cold warmed only by divine grace. After the death of his spiritual father, of which he had been warned by a divine revelation, the direction of the community passed on to Simeon until the end of his life. Yet he did not abate his ascetic strivings in the least, nor let himself be distracted from his continual prayer by the practical task of running the monastery. 
enclosed in a shelter made of skin, without light or air, he would remain in prayer on his column from sunset until dawn, and holding on with his left hand, would beat his breast with his right hand, soaking his hair shirt with his tears. He would chant the whole psalter every night, accompanied by angelic voices, then recite the Book of Wisdom and the Gospels, and finish the prayers at sunrise, in order to take a short rest, after having sensed the column without needing to light his censer. He went so far as to deprive himself entirely of sleep for thirty days and nights, begging God to re release him from the tyranny of nature. But at the end of this period a heavenly voice said to him, You must sleep a little. This progress in rising up towards God provoked redoubled attacks on the part of the demons who sought to throw him from his column, but the saint, held by three angels, repulsed them. God therefore showed him increased favor with visions, miracles, and even the resurrection of a dead man, and finally Christ himself appeared to him to give him the power of casting out all impure spirits. His fame having spread throughout the land, he was not able to enjoy the solitude he desired, so that at the age of twenty, in 541, he decided to leave his column to return to the lonely place, pathless and inhabited only by wild beasts, where he had spent some time as a child. In a vision, Christ showed him the summit of the mountain, which by that time was called the Wonderful Mountain, a rock that the divine glory had covered with its shadow. As Simeon climbed the mountain, on which he would stand as on a natural column, the community of monks abandoned the monastery below, and they followed him to settle there in temporary shacks with no comfort. From the first day he was there, the crowds, having found the monastery deserted, discovered this new place of retirement, and making a way for themselves through the forest, they came to present all their ills to him. Filled with sadness, but unable to refuse to put his prayer at the service of God's suffering people, St. Simeon continued to work miracles and healings. As thousands of the possessed and sick and of pilgrims travel to this barren and waterless place to see the saint, the Lord told Simeon that he was about to provide for their needs. An angel appeared to him and traced the plan of a vast monastery and of a church on the ground exactly where the stylet stood, and a luminous cloud covered the wonderful mountain. A short time later, a large number of men from Isoria, whom Simeon had healed, arrived and they began to build. They were then replaced by other groups who succeeded one another so that the building grew rapidly without disturbing the monks who were able to continue to devote themselves to the work of God. The saint caused abundant water to gush forth and at his prayer the water never dried up. In the center of the church, which was dedicated to the Holy Trinity, and the monastic buildings constructed in the form of a cross, in the center a new column was erected for the saint. On the 4th of June, 551, Saint Simeon descended from the rocky spur on which he had stood for ten years, and placed by his monks on a throne and holding the Holy Gospels against his breast, was carried around the monastery to bless all the buildings, singing Alleluia. The monks then took him in their hands like a sacred vessel, and bowing down before him, placed him on the platform of the new column, which Christ, appearing in all his glory, had just blessed himself. From the top of this column, from which the saint one day saw a ladder reaching to the gate of heaven, Simeon did not forget to watch over the good order of the monastery. Some Iberians soon came to join the monks, and they had their own community on the wonderful mountain, and it kept strong links with Georgia, where St. Simeon was greatly venerated. In 557, following a dreadful vision, 
Simeon announced that mighty earthquakes would follow, and he had the monks sing stroparia, which he himself composed, for sixty days in order to calm the wrath of God. As he had predicted, the earthquakes greatly affected Constantinople and Nicaea, destroying Nicomedia and Calabria, but causing only minor damage in Antioch thanks to the saints' protection. However, a little after this scourge had been averted, an epidemic, which had also been predicted by the saint, hit Antioch. At the saint's prayers, part of the city was spared, but the calamity reached the wonderful mountain, where even a few of the monks died. Simeon's much-loved disciple Conan was one of the victims, and the saint, through his prayer, brought him back to life again. In spite of the urging of the crowds who wished to receive Holy Communion from this God-bearing Father, whose miracles showed forth the authenticity of his faith and holiness, Simeon refused to be ordained priest until the day when, at the age of thirty-three in 554, in obedience to a heavenly voice, he accepted ordination by Bishop Dionysius of Seleucia, who climbed the column in order to ordain him. After having been for long years a living testimony to the Lord's words, He that believes in me, the works that I shall do, he shall do also, and greater works than this shall he do. St. Simeon, feeling that his earthly sojourn was coming to an end, prophesied in the presence of two of his disciples the disrepute into which the monastery would be plunged after his death. He revealed to them also that from his youth he had received the grace from God to deprive himself entirely of food, and that each Sunday, after the divine liturgy, an angel would bring him heavenly nourishment. He then addressed his last spiritual counsels to his disciples, and he peacefully gave his soul into God's hands at the age of seventy-one on the 24th of May, 592, thereby joining the dwelling place of the angels whom he had so well imitated in his life on earth. Blessed is our God, always now and forever to the ages of ages. Amen. Glory to thee, our God, glory to thee. O heavenly King, the Comforter, the Spirit of Truth, who art in all places and fillest all things, treasury of good things and giver of life, come and dwell in us and cleanse us from every impurity and save our souls, O good one. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, have mercy on us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. O Holy Trinity, have mercy on us. Lord, be gracious unto our sins. Master, pardon our iniquities. Holy One, visit and heal our infirmities for thy name's sake. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Body, O 
Simeon, our righteous Father, intercede with Christ God that our souls be saved. The charioteer of Pharaoh was sunk in olden times by Moses' rod, which wrought a mighty wonder when in the cross's form it struck the sea, dividing it in twain. And it led into safety, sojourning Israel that fled by foot, chanting to the Lord God a song of praise. O Holy Father Simeon, pray to God for us. The memorial of one working Father Simeon is an occasion for true theology and illumination for all who come together with pure hearts to extol the greatness thereof and thine admirable way of love. Holy Father Simeon, pray to God for us. Good tidings were announced to thy renowned mother by the voice and appearance of the Baptist, and she conceived and bare thee a most fragrant and divine dwelling for the Godhead of three hypostases, O all-blessed Father. Holy Father Simeon, pray to God for, for us. For knowing that thou wouldst miraculously become a divinely graced chariot of righteousness from thine infancy, O Father, the great forerunner commanded thee to abstain from thy mother's left breast and to be fed from the rock. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Thou didst receive the first fruit of a most mystical life, O Father, through the labor of regeneration, the gift of the Spirit, and from infancy by divine inspiration thou didst show the beauty of thy soul to be brighter than the sun. Both now and ever and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Adorned with the varied colors of grace, O most graced of God, thou gavest birth to the Father's word, who in his ineffable compassion became flesh past mind and speech, and thou hast remained a virgin undefiled, O blessed Lady. Above all to the heavens art thou, o Lord, passionate, so too of the church art thou founder. Do thou establish me in unfeigned love for thee, who art the height of things sought for, and staff of the faithful, O thou only friend of man. O holy Father Simeon, pray to God for us. From thy tender youth thou was an excellent struggler and a fervent lover of the divine beauty, Wherefore the Master, for knowing thee, sanctified thee in the womb, O celebrated Father Simeon. Holy Father Simeon, pray to God for us. Made wise in the true wisdom of the Spirit from earliest childhood, O righteous and wonder-working Father, thou wast deemed worthy to behold with thine own eyes the incomprehensible God, surrounded by the heavenly host. Holy Father Simeon, pray to God for us. Since the senses of thy soul were illumined by the dread vision of God, O righteous Father, thou hadst the wondrous ability to discern between them that held the good and them that did not, O Simeon, and thou led a life free of fault. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. The angel sent to appear openly unto thee, exhorted thee to embrace the angelic way of life, and with gladsome staff thou didst follow in the footsteps of him that appeared to thee, O God-bearing Father, both now and ever and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Thou alone led me up again to life when I was slain of old, O all pure one, for thou gavest birth to the anipostatic life, whom most inimical death struck against and was manifestly broken to pieces. Established on the rock of Christ Jesus, divine will, thou wast a lofty pillar on earth, O wise Father, supporting its farthest parts with thy healings shown unto all. Wherefore, as with faith we keep thy holy remembrance, we receive enlightenment and cry to thee, saying, Deliver us by thy prayers. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Possessing thee in truth as our bold intercessor, and advocate with God, O August, ever-Virgin, 
We plead to thy holy church, and we all ask thy mighty help. Wherefore, rescue us from all the malice of demons, snatch us from the terrible and dread condemnation, who faithfully call thee blessed. Thou art my strength, thou art my power and might, O Lord. Thou art my God, thou who hast not absent from thy father's arms, thou Lord art my joy. Thou hast deigned to visit our lowliness and our poverty. To thee, therefore, I cry out with Habakkuk the prophet, Glory be to thy power, O friend of man. O Holy Father Simeon, pray to God for us. Thou couldst hardly suffer to abide any longer in the world, O Father, since thou art Christ, the power of God, to guide thee, and passing thy life in impassable deserts, though yet a child, thou didst fearlessly dwell among wild beasts, and didst delight in bodily labor. Holy Father Simeon, pray to God for us. Thou didst bound into the mountains like a heart, longing after the divine flowing springs. Finding them, O Father Simeon, thou didst slake thy thirst for God's love, and having drunk therefrom, thou overflows with theology and looks upon the face of Christ. Holy Father Simeon, pray to God for o us. O righteous Father, before thou camest to the divine John, he with his noetic eyes saw thee wearing white, and carried as it were upon a chariot, and again as a child led with the pillar of light to the place where he stood. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. By the grace that was given thee, thou wast guided us from strength to deifying strength, O glorious Simeon, and thou camest to the heart of the heavenly-minded John, with whom thou didst gladly pass through the training school of struggles, and became an angel. Both now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Having sprouted from the royal line of David, thou gavest birth to the King, the Word, who beyond telling and past understanding, shone from the Father before the ages, O Virgin. Therefore, with a godly mind, with the faithful call thee blessed as the Theotokos. Wherefore hast thou deprived me and cast me the hapless one far from thy countenance, and the outer darkness is enshrouded and cast its gloom over me? Yet I beseech thee to thou convert me and direct me to the light of thy precepts, O Lord my God. O Holy Father Simeon, pray to God for us. As a most fair child filled with beauty, the Lord manifestly came to thee where thou stoodst, and flashing with the glory of his patient endurance, he showed himself crucified, as thou didst ask, O Father. Holy Father Simeon, pray to God for thy us. Thy divine life shone with the splendor of revelations, and filled with the fragrance of thy divine mirth, thou like an athlete in contest, Deeds cut down the assailing hordes of demons, O servant of God. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Exalted on to divine visions in the purity of thy mind, O all-blessed Simeon, and having thy heart as a fountain of wisdom which overflowed with life-giving streams, Thou didst enlighten with teachings from God the souls of thy companions. Both now and ever and unto the ages of ages. Amen. God, the Word of God, who is apprehended as being together with the Father before the ages, in the riches of his compassion, dwelt in thy womb and became poor, and appeared as a mortal, becoming flesh upon the earth, O all hymned virgin Theotokos. In treaty do I pour forth unto the Lord, and to him do I proclaim all my sorrows. For many woes fill my heart to repletion, and lo, my life unto Hades is now drawn nigh. Like Jonas do I pray to thee, raise me up from corruption, O Lord my God. O Holy Father Simeon, pray to God for us. Raised on high by virtue like the marvellous Moses, thou didst ascend a lofty pillar by divine behest, and was exalted in spirit, and receiving illuminating power, O Father, thou was made glorious like him. Holy Father Simeon, pray to God for us. The enemy frenziedly, shooting with his bow, emptied his quiver of soul-slaying arrows, but was unable to shake the tower of thy soul, O God-bearer. 
for it was firmly established on the unbreakable rock of Christ. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Delighting in thine easy endurance of the sweat of asceticism, Christ the Master handed thee an almighty rod, and urged thee to heal therewith the diseases of the sick, O Divine Father, both now and ever and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Knowing the depth of thy terrible mystery by symbolic manifestations, the God-proclaiming prophets announced beforehand that thou wouldst conceive God in thy womb, O all-blameless Virgin, and now we, having seen the fulfillment, do also believe. Desiring the heights thou wast translated from the earth, thy pillar was made a second heaven by thy toils. By it thou didst shine with the splendor of great wonders, O righteous one, and thou ever prayest to Christ, the God of all in behalf of us all. Quenching the most pernicious power of the Chaldean furnace, the youths cried out to the Creator who had descended in the guise of an angel, Blessed and praised art thou, O God of our fathers. O Holy Father Simeon, pray to God for us. With a resolute mind, thou fled, said his quiet of the world, and a downfall is had come of empty glory. And thou didst long to be solid in spirit, O God-bearer, crying out unceasingly, Blessed art thou, the God of our Father. Holy Father Simeon, pray to God for Stretching us. Stretching thy hands out in the form of a cross, and praying thou beheld with thine own eyes, Christ in glory with the angels, O God-bearer, as he commanded thee to ascend a wondrous mountain. Holy Father Simeon, pray to God for us. Making haste to the mind that soared in the heavens, thou left thy pillar in eager obedience to the Master's divine commands, and thou didst reach that mountain which thou, in a wondrous manner, thyself didst name wondrous. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Thou found the most lofty peak to be like a heavenly garden planted with all manner of sweet-smelling flowers, a wonder-worker. And thou dwellest thereon, and didst build this monastery as shown to thee by God. Both now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. As we walk in the light of the Lord, come, let us praise the divine city of the King of kings, even Mary the Immaculate, the truth of Tokos, the hope of our soul. The Chaldee tyrant, mad with rage, fired his furnace of blazing flame, seven times more hot against the worshippers of God. But seeing them kept in safety by a power greater than his, he then cried aloud, Ye children, bless the Creator, the Saviour and Redeemer. O ye priests, sing his praises, exalt him, O ye people, to all the endless ages. O Holy Father Simeon, pray to God for us. The illumination of triple light mingled itself with the apt powers of thy soul, O righteous Simeon. In a light and a throne by the single Godhead thou didst gloriously build before thy pillar a thrice blessed house for the divinity, and didst ordain that the uncreated Trinity be worshipped therein unto the ages. Holy Father Simeon, pray to God for us. When the almighty power of the Holy Spirit divinely took up its abode in thee, it moved all those maddened by evil spirits to hasten to thee from the farthest parts, and healing them with thy palm staff, thou taught them thus, Praise the Creator unto the ages. Holy Father Simeon, pray to God for us. Vigorously thou didst subject the carnal mind to the spirit with fastings and prayers, and when thou had quenched and done away the burning of the belly, O Father, thou attest not, and in a manner beyond man's nature didst live by heavenly sustenance alone, Praising the giver, thereof unto the ages. We bless Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the Lord. Christ the Lord entrusted the divine choir of disciples to thee, O divine Father, whom thou didst accept with love, 
anointing them with thy teachings, that they might press forward in the course of asceticism, and with them thou gavest rest to the sick, while groweth glorifying Christ unto the ages. Both now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Implore thy Son and Lord for us, who sincerely and wholeheartedly cry out to thee, O all pure virgin, and confess thee to be the Mother of God and ask for the loosing of sins and for the salvation of us who faithfully sing. Supremely exalt Christ, O you people, unto the ages. Terror filled every ear that learnt the unheard of condescension of God the Word. How of his own good will the Lord Most High came down to such lowliness as from a virgin's womb to take a body becoming man. Hence we, the faithful flock, magnify the undefiled Mother of our God. O Holy Father Simeon, pray to God for us. With thy conciliatory prayers to Christ, who filled a multitude of many people with a few loaves, O thrice blessed Simeon, thou didst feel by thy blessings the empty granaries in thy monastery, and didst deliver thy flock from hunger. Holy Father Simeon, pray to God for and us. And the suppliant words of thy righteous mother, the honourable Martha, we importuned thee to entreat Christ, Thou didst not disdain to fulfil her petition, and thou drayest from Theopolis the wrath sent by God. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Released from the body, O all blessed Simeon, thou beheldst the end of thy struggles, the utterly unspeakable deification in the highest, to which deification thou hast flown from hence, and through which rejoicing in spirit, Thou reflects the splendour of the three hypostases. Both now and ever and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Thou becames the temple of God when thou didst contain the uncontainable one in thy womb, and gavest birth to the incarnate word, who was formerly without flesh. Beseech him, O pure one, that forgiveness of failings be granted to all that ever magnify thee with faith. Thou didst flash forth from the desert, and didst enlighten the whole world, and multitudes of monastics greatly rejoice on thy memory. God and the seraphim, thee who without corruption gave us birth to God the Word, the very Theotokos, thee do we magnify. Glory to you, Christ God, our hope, glory to you. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Holy Father, bless. May Christ, O true God, and the prayers of his holy and all pure mother, with the prayers of St. John the Baptist, of the holy and all praised apostles, with the power and under the protection of the holy life-giving cross and all the holy bodiless powers of heaven, and the prayers of our fathers among the saints Ninian and Cuthbert, the bishops of God, see so is the great Brandon the Navigator, Oran of Iona, Columba of Iona, Kenneth, Ronan, Molwag, all the saints of all these islands, our protectors and our benefactors. At the prayers of our righteous father Simeon of the wondrous mountain, with the prayers of the holy martyrs Meletius, the commander, and those with him, John, Stephen, Serapion, the Egyptian, Callinicus, the Magus, and twelve counts and tribunes, Faustus, Festus, Marcellus, Theodore, Malatius, Sergius, Marcellinus, Felix, Photinus, Theodoriscus, Mercurius, and Didymus, the three holy women, Marciana, Palladia, and Susanna, the two holy infants, 
Syriacus and Christian and another 11,208 who were martyred with them in the reign of Antoninus Pius. With the prayers of the holy martyrs and brethren, donation and rogation of none in Brittany, with the prayers of St. Vincent, with the prayers of our righteous father Nisita, as a starlight of Peri Yaroslav Zaleski, the wonder worker, with the prayers of our father among the saints Gregory, Archbishop of Novgorod, and all those with them whose memory we also keep this day, and the prayers of the holy ancestors of God, Hioachim and Anna, and of all the saints, have mercy on us and save us. For he is good, and he loves mankind. Amen. And the prayers of our holy fathers, Lord Jesus Christ, O God, have mercy upon us and save us. Amen.